people that put a lot of stress because we lost money and also at the time my, my younger autistic brother was hard to cope with more. Basically it was just all stress on top of each other so we started having to go each other every night, it got worse and worse. Just really, well, angry and basically they weren't, they were listening to me but they didn't like what I was coming out with like swearing at them, having to go at them, I didn't think they cared about me which in the end of the day they did, they just didn't know what to do with my attitude. So then I packed my stuff and I, they didn't know what I was doing, they just thought I was in my room just so I lend my temper out and then my mum saw me with my suitcase and she goes where are you going and I go I'm living with a different family and what telling you where I'm going and she was telling me not to saying please don't go we don't want you to but then in the end I just slammed the door on her and it was raining unfortunately but I was just walking to my mate's house Bex and that was it just left I wasn't sure what the official, what I should do basically because I didn't think it was right that a 15 year old should be staying in somebody else's house. The lady I was working with at the time, her best friend was a social worker so in fact she asked her and she said yes I should inform social services about it, which is what I did um, and they were, they were very helpful. It's important for local authorities to know about those arrangements because there have been situations in the past where children have been uh, abused within these relationships, although it's important to stress that a lot, a majority of the private fostering arrangements are, are very good arrangements and positive arrangements. I first met Yuling when she moved into our village with her mum and stepdad. So when she first came over from China, I started giving her English lessons one day a week. I went to pick her up from school and take her back home and so I got to know her and the family that way. The family lived in the village for a couple of years and then they moved on and I didn't lose touch completely. Yuling continued to come and stay with me for weekends. And after, I don't know how long really, she would say, look, please, can I come and live with you? And I'd sort of put her off and say, oh, there's lots more people to think about. But after she'd asked persistently for probably six months or so, I thought I need to listen really to this um, child who's crying out for something. And um, my first thing was to ring social services and say, well, what do I do if someone else's child wants to come and live with me? Is there any way that can be arranged? And so I was told about the private fostering arrangement. When I notified social services, they said that Yuling could come and stay. And once she'd been here four weeks, I needed to ad advise them again and someone would come out and visit us, which they did, and then there was various paperwork that to be sorted out and various checks had to be done on me to make sure that I was kosher and a suitable parent. Yuling has her own social worker who comes to see her every six weeks to make sure that she's still happy with the arrangement and wants to continue with it and that she's happy here. And then I also have the support of a social worker uh, to whom I can turn when my when I need it, which is very helpful as well. I was advised by the social worker that I could apply for child benefit, which I did, and then that was the gateway to me also getting child tax credit. This woman was helping me get in contact with my brother because I missed him so much. One day I saw him and I just like thought about my parents thinking should I go and see them maybe. And we kept meeting up every day and I just, eventually I just said no I want to go back now 
we've had our space, maybe it's time to go back, and ever since it's been okay, really, we need that space. Well, lots of different types of children and young people are privately fostered. At one extreme, we have children who have been trafficked into the UK, perhaps for the purposes of domestic slavery. At the other extreme, you may have children, young people, who for whatever reason are unable to live with their families. Perhaps there's been a family row, perhaps there are real problems at home, and the child's gone to live with a family friend. Also children, for example, living for more than 28 days in a language school. It's really important that professionals know about private fostering because you may come across it in the, the course of your work. So it's really important, for example, if you're a teacher, to ask yourself the question, if a child joins your class, say, in the middle of a year, well, do I know who this child is living with? Do I know who's picking them up every day? Have I seen any papers that confirm their identity? Just making sure that you actually do know who the children in your class are. For a health professional, similar issues, you might, perhaps if you're a GP or a nurse, see the same carer coming into the surgery with different children. You know, it's, it's worth just stepping back and thinking, am I sure that that carer really is closely related to that child, or could this be a private fostering arrangement? Even where you're not sure of uh, whether um, it meets the criteria uh, of a private fostering arrangement, please notify because let us make the decision about whether it is um, a, a private fostering arrangement um, or, or not. Well, the key message is that if you suspect a private fostering arrangement, don't ignore it. You should make sure that the private foster carer understands that they have a duty to notify the local authority of the existence of this private fostering arrangement. If you believe that they are not going to notify the local authority, then you should notify the local authority yourself. This is the very best way that we can work together to ensure that children and young people in private fostering are supported, that they're kept safe, but also that local authorities are able to support all those involved in the private fostering arrangement.